He's really, really dangerous. Now, here's, he was a, a great chance of a goal. He came across. Now, watch the pass here. Watch the hand pass. Is it an illegal hand pass? I mean, that sounds perfectly illegal mm. to me. Mm. When, you, when you compare it to a lot of the other passes that went on down at the other end of the field, especially, especially one from mm. Shane O'Neill. Now, yeah. watch now. He's an open hand. That's yeah, a, that's, that's definitely. Surely, no, that's I, I'd say Cork were probably more guilty uh, yeah, with yeah. some of the hand passes there in the first half. Joe, he uh, gave a, a free in for that for which he got a point. There was no free. Been a free, no free. Well, Liam no. Sheedy, we saw very frustrated about, Absolutely, the, about yeah. some of the. Yeah, Cork I mean, does Cork have been looking one or two occasions that they are given the hand pass that seem yeah, to be right. illegitimate yeah. and they're getting away with it? There was no one for Shane O'Neill, especially back to the goal. The penalty to Moss. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, I mean, there's I mean, the two lads here were maybe wondering if at, at, at first was it a square ball and stuff like that, but if you look at it, it's not a square ball, look at Zaki's position, it's a great catch and no doubt, look, he's pulled down by Patrick Maher and uh, the referee is correct, it is a penalty. Uh, I think what happens next is, is, is interesting as the rules go, I mean, what, I, I mean, we see Barry Kelly, look, he's inside, he's talking to Brendan Cummins, the new rule, you're not allowed to move before the ball is hit, you know, watch now when Patrick Horgan lines up to take the ball. And if he can get a camera shot from behind the goal, you see Brendan Cummins. Look, and there's clear movement. He's gone before the ball is actually hit, but right? Tomorrow, so that's always I know, happen, but it's a ridiculous rule, though. Yeah, Absolutely it's... crazy, right? I mean, and give credit to Patrick Horgan, right? I mean, he's got a lot of penalties in the, maybe in the last year or so, and the ball, a lot of them have gone straight down on Brendan Cummins. I mean, you look at last year in Torles, he hit Brendan Cummins in the head. This time he went but, to the corner. But Tomasz, there's no it's problem not, with that because yeah. the, goal, the goal was scored. The big problem would be if it's yeah. locked. If the save, if it's saved, the goal would, he, would he have given the penalty? But, 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 but it's a ridiculous rule. I know, I know, it it they brought into football. Surely it's not ridiculous because the whole point is to penalise the defence for fouling. Well, we can't blame Barry Kelly because we don't know whether he would have penalised him or not. You know, they wouldn't have to lie. If you were a goal, maybe he would have penalised him. Maybe, maybe he would have penalised yeah. him if the ball ha had been saved. Maybe he would penalise him. You know, yeah. so, so we, we can't blame Barry no, Kelly. No, no, I'm, I'm not blaming no. Cyril. It, but are you it's all, it, every goal he does, like in a three man penalty, the two will stand on the line, so the two backs, yeah. and he'll usually take a yard out. Just to be, He's like a cat, he's yeah. going to go to the first. And if he gets a deflection of the ball, the two, we'll just say the two backs have a chance to block. That, that's yeah. the theory behind it. And it's very hard, even in football, you're going to find any, any good goal, he's going to kind of advance to go down the angle. I mean, there's right, three changes in the football rules the hand pass, taking the kick from the sideline ball, and moving the penalty in closer. Three changes in hurling, right? There was no need to do anything to alter the penalty situation. A goalkeeper, when is he he's supposed to move and the ball is coming straight at his, at his, at his head? I, mean, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. But, there was no need go, Even to going away for that, that's for the discussion for later yeah. on, maybe the boys yeah. tonight. Like, it's, it's the quality of the hurling here. Is yeah, it's, it's quite it's top the, the Cork defence, uh, the tackling of the Cork defence, helped out by their midfielders, who in turn are helped out by the half hours. Like, it's a tactic that people didn't expect Cork to play now yeah. today. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's working to absolute perfection. Now, the big question is, have they, have they mm. the stamina, you know, with all their legs, will they have the stamina in the second half to keep up that work rate? That all is right. the biggest question for Cork. If they have, they'll, they'll close out this game and they'll win it. But tip of the younger legs, and with that, you know, and, and, and also with the fact that now Corden is back on his hockey, yeah. is that going to make a big difference in the second half? All right, then, of course, bear in mind, Cork have been getting the goal, Cyril, and that second goal from Pat Horgan again showed yeah, disarray. It, it, it's it's, it's direct route again, like, you know, again, it's, it's a long, John Garner's tipping great long balls and it comes in very high again, and again, Saki's right underneath. Now, that's a great catch. He turns here, you, you think, I thought he was going to kick him. It comes out here to Pat Horgan. Now, he's good on either side, but he drills his left-handed shot across. Cummins is slightly, kind of, he can't see with the defenders, but look, I was sure he's going to kick here, falls here, reduce cross disruption, it goes back out here to Pat Hogan, left hand, it goes across Cummins, usually you'd get to that, but he's maybe on sight of it, but it's another great call. <laughs> Pat Hogan is, is a very good striker, left or right, he's a natural predator, he has a good bit of pace as well, like, and he has beautiful wrists, but it's right. the goals, even yeah. though Cork two points up, it's really the goals they're putting them there, because Jerry said, like, Tip have scored nine good points, and they're not playing that well, if they come into the game, they still have a great chance of winning it. But I still go back to Cork's mm. planning, Les, you know, the planning for the penalty, he put the ball away from Cummins okay. into the corner, mm. the planning of that, he put it at, at Cummins' weak side, into the far corner, so they have their homework done. Temporarily. The question is, can they keep it up? Here's an interesting score coming in from Parnell Park. Full time, Antrim 315, Offaly 121 in the Leinster Hurling Championship. That's a draw. Offaly got a last minute point to bring the match to extra time. So Antrim were leading by five towards the end. Offaly oh. needed a last minute score to get a draw there. That's gone to extra time. We'll keep you in touch with that. Remember that earlier, down beat Donegal after extra time by two, 115 to Donegal's two goals and 10 points. We have another break coming up after that, the second half of this classic game between Cork and Tipperary.
time in a decade, Ireland will play host to the Barbarians. Thoman Park will provide the setting as some of the world's best players take to the field for this unique match. Ireland versus Barbarians, Friday at 7.30 on RTE2. Experience GAA coverage in a class of its own. From the writers that define hurling. In Championship, your dedicated GAA magazine, only in Monday's Irish Examiner. In 1873, Adolf Coors found the perfect place to brew ice-cold beer, but it was high up in the Rockies. So he set about building a railway. He loaded the trains with barrels of his beloved beer and packed them carefully with ice so they'd stay Rocky Mountain cold and refreshing. You see, when you put that much pride into what you do, you want the whole world to share it. Coors Light, delivering Rocky Mountain refreshment since 1873. It's the Subway low-fat turkey and ham sub. Mm, actually, can I? It's the new low-fat, hang on, you've gone and changed your mind, and you're perfectly entitled to Perry Perry Chicken Sub. Freshly toasted bread filled with tender chicken, then... Not toasted. Not toasted. Um, okay, toasted, then massively heaped with fresh salad and... Bit more sauce? Right, it's the low-fat, I'm totally having to talk like a complete idiot because you've gone and changed your mind several times, which is absolutely fine, Perry Perry Chicken, with truckloads of salad and a weedy bit more sauce, sub toasted. Part of the low-fat range at Subway. Feel good food, made the way you want it. Yeah, and a reminder about tonight's highlights programme. As Jair says, there's a lot to, uh, to look at from today and including the other games. We'll have action from the Connacht Championship where Roscommon have beaten London by 14 points to six. We'll have a report on that. That thriller between Antrim and Offaly and Down beating Donegal after extra time. Plus, of course, uh, all of this Cork and Tipperary match. I wonder, is today a day for extra time? Uh, we could well see more of it, given there's been two matches already. But you made reference to the short puckouts and, and Cork's use of the Cork short puckout and maybe tips slowness to react to that but you have some examples here Tomas. Yeah I mean at times as you as a manager you can be pulling your hair out on the, on, on the, on the sideline when these go wrong but there's no better man than Donald Cusick maybe to give that type of ball you know and yeah. like certainly I mean they've worked on it I, I, I would think over the last couple of weeks again with this game in mind the tip would drop back out so we have a corner back free we have a wing back free and Look, they found there's John Garner in acres of space. He's the last he's, man you'd run free. He's the last man yeah. to be given the ball like that. Like he'd strike the ball 16, 70 yards on the field. But, Jerry, when you said Lark Corbett maybe should drop back on Gardner, is it, would just for the puck out, I'm saying. I just know for that. the puck out. Yeah. So, yeah. does that yeah. not give the option to give but it to Shane O'Neill? Yeah. But the puck out from a corner back is not going go to go as far. Very far. Yeah. You know, but Gardner was getting the ball and he was, he was able to get it down right as far as it's at yeah. the edge of the square. That was the crucial yeah. thing. Right. Like, Shane O'Neill wouldn't be able to get it that far, you right. know. So, it was the danger it, it was the danger that came from the ball that Gardner yeah. was delivering. That's what was causing but all I think that. But I mean, Tip have copped onto it as well, right? So, in the last 10 minutes of the first half, you've seen a lot more ball going down to the wings, to Jory and to, and, and to Ben as well. And we weren't winning that much comfortable yeah. ball in the half-hour oh. position as well, which was well breaking Don, ball Don, to John O'Brien. Stone Oak yeah. last few years, like, he's like a conductor of an orchestra, to be fair to Oak. He has a lot of critics. He's not that popular in the Hurlem world at times. But like, he's, he's, a great, he's a great, he's a great yeah. keeper, but he's also a great kind of... He's able to conduct the play. He's, he gives more to Cork than just the goalkeeper. So but you, you mean he's not popular... Why? Because of his stance. Well, in the, the sense strike. that he's very outspoken. Like he's, well, he's, he's, he's very popular yeah. among a lot, not yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. But I've seen Jerry. It's like if if he's playing a county and he thinks to not up to it, he'll say it out straight. But he doesn't beat about the bush. No. Like, like if he said before, he's very popular. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. he's very popular. Ah, he'd be very popular if, amongst if, the players. Yeah, he's very popular. But absolutely. if you're looking for an indication as before the game started as to how Cork were going to go, you look at Sean Og. He was written off. Pace was gone. He's playing absolutely exceptionally. Mm, Norm yeah. McGrath has hardly got a pop at the ball. The other one was Aisaki inside the edge of the square. Yeah. Mm. He's the man who's creating absolute havoc. But then again, so there, everything I mean, is going yeah, right for Cork at the moment. Absolutely, but you yeah. look at it and there's still only two points in it. Oh, right? that's and the if you look, yeah. if you look yeah. at it on Tipperary side of it, I mean, they brought in a new man, number 14. Will, will Brian O'Brien there? He, 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 he will, he will. We've just heard no change. He is struggling, being honest with you, right? And you're not seeing Dion Kelly, you're not seeing that. Okay, we did see glimpses of Lark Cobbett. Seamus Cannon is doing well. 
uh, on Ronan and Cornell and stuff like that. But like it's at number 14. They are struggling with that position. That is a, that was a bold move. A guy that has played well in a couple of challenge matches over the last two or three weeks. It doesn't seem to right, be working that much. Is, is that not good calm management though? Look, you're doing all right, lads. We'll, we'll, we'll not panic now. Yeah, well, I thought now, knowing from the college scene, that to be Timmy Hammersley, that he'd get the run before yeah. Brian O'Mara, because both of them played for Waterford IT. I thought to be Hammersley. Now, O'Mara's on Cadigan, who'd known from college hurling. Cadigan yeah. is a great competitor. He'd keep getting out in front. He could play any right. game. But it, Hammersley could come on and cause havoc. Right, the moment of truth has now come for Tipperary. Mm. They were always winning games well into uh, in, at half time. Maybe in the line they were point behind. But they were always on top in all the Munster Championship games last year. Now they're okay. behind. This is, the, this is the, the half that's going to tell us. Oh, but they still have a chance here. Oh, big listen, chance. Hold it. Still have a big but chance. this is the test of now. Yeah. All right, we'll come back now, minutes. Let's go back and, and watch the, <coughs> the test and we'll rejoin Jer Canning and Michael Dignan. Thanks very much indeed, Des. Everything is set to go here. No changes made by either team management. We've just been watching a very good game of Komogi. Young schools girls in action. One Chloe Kerwin from uh, Ross Gray was a star in that. Let's see if... Uh, Brian O'Mara will start in the second half as he kicks that ball ahead. And uh, straight away. And free awarded. There are no subs on, but Tipperary have completely revamped their forward line. Brian O'Mara has started right half forward, Lark Harbin at centre forward, and John O'Brien is the only forward in the same position at left half. And then you have Noel McGrath right corner forward. Owen Kelly has gone full forward, and Seamus Callan gone top at left. So whether that was a pre preordained plan or not, it's very unusual to see so many forwards change around. Owen oh, Kelly has this opportunity to get within a point of Cork once again straight over first of the second half coming in a matter of seconds and his fourth point of the match one from a 65 three from freeze and certainly Jerry, I think a huge goal scoring threat in there now with Noel McGraw, Owen Kelly and Seamus Callanan in the full forward line that's you know that's a way that's stronger a serious full forward, forward line serious full forward line will they get the necessary possession fuck out Intended there for Niall McCarthy. Comes back once again here via Tom Kenny. Notice that Tom Kenny has put on a pair of shorts underneath the uh, Knicks for the second half. Oh, he's called bicycle shorts. Just to make sure the uh, hamstring is nicely warmed. Uh, Declan Fanning having to remove the spare Hurleys clear the decks first line ball of the second half well cut up towards John O'Brien runs on instead towards Brian Murphy Brian Murphy gets it away has a little set two with Noel McGrath as play continues with Kieran Murphy up towards Asakio Halpine out from the full forward position at least momentarily Big ball in once more towards Owen Kelly. Runs all here. Dangerous situation. They look to hit this one. Seamus Callaghan miss hit it. Comes out at the end towards Shane O'Neill. And that's the tackle which the referee might want to have a look at because Shane O'Neill is clearly down. Similar to last night now, Jerry Nod. You, don't like this, you know, they see players from Cork coming in there trying to influence the referee. He's going to have a look now. Well, he's isolating Brian O'Mara, first of all. The player is on his debut. And then checking that Shane O'Neill is OK. 24-year-old from Bishopstown. Took it to the head, so there's always an immediate concern. Buggy has had some good moments during that first half. Amazing to come in without any National League experience behind him. Shane Murphy is the one who is warming up on the sideline. Should there be a requirement to replace Shane O'Neill because of the injury? Looks like he's going to be OK. Well, he's been Cork's most consistent defender during the National League. Had a great league final. And he's able to continue. And the referee now wants to have a few words with Brian O'Mara. There's a yellow card issued to him. So three yellow cards shown to Tipperary players. Here you see Shane O'Neill now going down the ball and you know, straight into him. Head high tackle, you know. We saw a player being sent off last night for the same tackle. 
It's up towards Osaki Ohalpin again. There are three temporary men around him at this stage. Not a case of double marking, triple marking on occasions when the ball's up in the air like that. Niall McCarthy now looking for a colleague. That was knocked and couldn't reach him, however. It's away in the end by Bra Brendan Maher. All the way down. Lark Homer tries to flick it to himself over Curran's head. Goes after it. Covering back is Brian Murphy. Good covering. Picks out Curran once again. Sets off. Links up with Cahill Nocton. Belts at a good 50 metres forward. Should favour the Tipperary back, however. Going across here, Paddy Stapleton. He's left it behind to Big Osaki. Trying to crush his way through past Carter O'Mahony. Osaki in full flight. And Osaki drives it high as he can, but accurately between the posts and over the bar. His first point of the match. Well, what a contribution he's making. Taking on the entire Tipperary defence, it seems. A one-man attack on occasions. 2-6 to 10 points. Yeah, that's what he was getting criticised for in the league final. You know, he wasn't finishing those chances, but he's really a different player today. Corker also a stronger, more physically, more assertive side than they were in that league final. This is Pat Horgan trying to break loose. Tom Kenny, little hand pass. Niall McCarthy skips away. Chasing after him is Declan Fanning. Will it curl in sufficiently inside the right hand post? It will. And Niall McCarthy got his, his first point in this afternoon's game. And Jerry, you see again there, the car players all day, they're looking around, looking for the loose men, and a couple of lovely passes, and Niall McCarthy, great, you know, thought he was going to be hooked on the right, turned on to his left, and a great point. Well, with the rearranged temporary forward line, you thought they were going to really mean business at the start of the second half, but the first five minutes, they haven't made any serious inroads. Instead, it is Niall McCarthy, fresh from scoring that point, down along the line towards Horgan, the Glen Rovers player, very talented lad. Cahill knocked in now from an impossible angle, has a go, but uh, the angle on this occasion is just far too acute for him. It's Cork's third wide of this match. Very strong rivalry between these players. A lot of young players who've met one another in colleges hurling as well, minor level, under 21 down the years. Great rivalry. It's Sean Ogo Halpine, crashes into Declan Shanning's tackle there, gets the ball forward as far as Niall McCarthy can go for another score here, and he does. That's two in a row for McCarthy, who suddenly got loose and got hot, and Declan Fanning is going to have to be an awful lot tighter, marking the man from Carrick Tool. Now, yeah, well, if anyone has any question marks over Sean Ogo Halpine, I think they can get rid of him now. Brilliantly won the ball down the wing and took a very heavy tackle and gave a great pass. And Another great score by Nell McCarthy, who's on fire now. Cork leading by four, and Cork have possession again. It's Ronan Curran, very much the outsiders for so many people going into this match. Again it reaches Osaki O'Halpin, trying to release it forward here towards Kieran Fraggy Murphy. Can't get there. Michael Cahill gets across, he's now playing at left corner back. Fraggy Murphy has it again, it'll hand pass inside. As far as Nocton, great save! Brilliant piece of goalkeeper by Brendan Cummins, it's a 65. Well, that was a real good goal chance for Cahill knocked and the angle was exceedingly tight. Watch it again here, as it was fed ahead to him by his captain, Kieran Murphy. Watch for the goalkeeper, came out, spread himself well, got his legs to it, and resourcefully put it behind for a 65. Yeah, which are the work rate and the commitment and, and the, the running off the ball of Cork is, is, is brilliant at this stage. Uh, you know, me, myself included, thought maybe coming into the game that Cork mightn't have the legs of Tipperary, but at the moment, they're running them into the ground. It just shows you commitment and determination of everything at this level and uh, Cork are very, very hungry and, and at, at the moment they're all over Tipperary. So number 22, Seamus Hennessy comes on as we watch that resultant 65 go over the bar. Another one for John Gardner, his second pointed free of the match. So there is the new man in, Seamus Hennessy. And uh, Hennessy taking over from Brian O'Mara, who had just been yellow carded, remember. So what kind of difference will he make? Here's Lar Corbett, back in here. Seamus Caledon. Showing strength, showing resolution, knocking it ahead, but it's not a good ball. Doesn't really favour his colleagues inside. Up into the air, a real hit and hope one. And Gardner, head down, gets it out with determination as far as Sean O'Halpin. The old firm, standing strong, up to Osaki O'Halpin. Takes off, past Curran, trying to go past another man. Now, where's this going to end up? A lot of steps taken, free out. Just lost his way. 
Very promising for a moment there, and he spells danger each and every time he gets that ball into his hand. Yeah, great catch here again. I just hear when he gets away, he should have flicked it over to Bardon off his left side, but he came in and took on the extra man, and you know, at that stage. I well, think he had a goal in his uh, head, I he, think. He probably didn't do a lot wrong, you know, didn't he? But he had the ball for a long time in his possession. Speaking of goals, by the way, his brother, their brother, Sean Ogan Dosaki Satanta, scored three goals today, done in AFL football for Carlton against West Coast Eagles. He's got 24 for the season. He's the team's top scorer. Yeah. Corker doing well here. Kieran Murphy. Now, where's the Tipperary response? Inside towards Ben O'Connor. Three points so far, all of them from freeze for Ben. This time from an angle, a near impossible one at Porky Queen, straight between the posts and over. Ben's first of the second half, his fourth in all. And Cork lead by two goals, it's 2 10 to 10 points. Yeah, John, that's an absolutely brilliant score. Ben O'Connor, who to me has been one of the leading forwards of the last 20 years, and brilliant score. He's flying it out there. But the teamwork again, Colin Ockton is absolutely dominating the middle of the field. I wondered for earlier this year, you know, when was he ever going to be moved to midfield with Carr to use that pace and his link work was brilliant all day. Well, we're only ten minutes into the second half, but make no mistake about it, it's now a very, very serious question of Tipperary's character and resolve. That time they win a free. That time the challenge by Owen Cadigan was a little high on Owen Kelly. And the referee will step in, resolve it. He's blown his whistle and signalled a free in any way. We'll look after the afters as well. Well, John Gardner's going to get booked, there was no need for him to come in there afterwards and then kind of getting himself in trouble. So Barry Kelly from Westmeath restores order immediately. It was uh, yeah, Gallagher was who originally got tangled up with Owen Kelly before John Gardner came in, so it's a yellow card for Owen Cadigan. He's got the card, Tip have got the free, they need points. A word here with Sean Ogo Halpin and uh, Tipperary who need to score badly. They haven't scored since the first minute of the second half. So here we are in the 11th minute. Scoring ratio is not strong enough for them. They have to be concerned, but they have Owen Kelly. Hasn't scored from play so far, but he's got another one from a free. That's a fifth. So it's 2.10 to 11 points, the margin down to five. And the Tipperary fans behind the goal away to our left, which is at the city end, getting behind Liam Sheedy's team. Michael Ryan there alongside him, cornerback, wonderful cornerback in the past. Liam was a terrific defender also. Now it's about management, now it's about guiding this team through the rest of the Munster Championship. That's where they want to be, not in the qualifiers. It'll be a major body blow for Tipperary if they lose this one. They want to build upon last year. No McGrath, but such a good season. That's not a good shot. That's a very poor effort. I'm not sure if he was trying to slip it in for Lark Hall, but he would have it if he did. The puck out here towards Jerry O'Connor. Works out for Cork. He just got a touch. That's it out to Ben. Forward as far as Kieran Murphy. Hand pass back to John Gardner. Gardner striking it from a huge distance. Will it make it? Wow. Oh, it's just wide. Would have been a remarkable shot from that position so far out the field John Gardner is only 27 years of age seems like he's been around for a long long time yeah Kieran Murphy there with a hand pass back he's been operating way out the field creating a lot of chances yeah. Kieran doesn't score an awful lot but he does provide an awful lot of opportunities he does Jeremy, he, tackle, he, ta he tackles very very hard as well but if you look at the tactics Asaki is isolated inside 50 yards from goal nobody near him they're just hoping another ball gets into him and that's Seamus Calden trying to wriggle his way forward. He was being held back anyway, so it's going to be a free in. And Cork can't afford to do too much fouling now. They may be tiring. They can't afford to give Owen Kelly practice time after time. We know we can put them over from just about every angle and most distances. And this is well within his range. 45-meter line there, but he's about uh, 45 to 50 meters from the target. He's got five so far, the first was from a 65, the rest from freeze in and around the 40 metre distance. Amateur Whisper is trying to unsettle him. There's no unsettling Owen Kelly, however, and that is another one. So six for Owen Kelly. Team captain leading the way, pointed the way to his teammates. Yeah, Tom they Kenny is down again with the hamstring. 
Jerry, you'd wonder how, how much longer he can hold. You know, it's 15 minutes gone now, and this is the second time he's been down. Well, the referee wants the puck out taken by Donald O'Cusack. So they're keeping him going, Tom Kenny. A little bit of medical attention every so often. Still trying to pump a little bit of life into those legs. And he's out there to challenge for that. And the ball went off the Tipperary man, so it's going to be a line ball for Cork. Tom went up for it, but clearly it uh, touched a Tipperary finger and the linesman on the far side wasn't too far away from it. The linesman there is Pat Casey. They prepare. I wonder how many more of them will get in. They may be needed. Cork haven't used any subs so far. Remember, Michael Cusson has recovered from a hand injury, sustained in the league final. Not expect to see him. Tough pulling in there, ends up being another line ball for Cork, so in incremental progress being made on the uncovered side. Ben O'Connor again, no particular hurry. 31 years of age now. Four points already today. Great cut. Kieran Murphy in there towards it. Asaki going there as well. Left for Michael Cahill to get across. Beat the attempted block of Niall McCarthy. And it ends up being a line ball once again to Cork. So, seconds ticking away. Cork fans pretty happy, I'm sure. The manager must be content enough, but there's a lot of time still to go. 20 minutes. Yeah, and Jared Cork, you know, the way they're playing in general is they're just leaving a sack inside, bringing everyone else out to field and trying to win ball, and they're hoping for one more killer blow to get another ball into him and isolate him inside. But a goal for tip, on the other hand, would change the game completely. So, Ben O'Connor. That's easy one for Declan Fanning to mop up quickly and get it away. And the referee racing in there to offer his judgment. Well, now, the uh, Porky Cueve Stadium is right alongside the River Lee, and that looks very graceful. No doubt they're looking in as well and wondering, what's all that cheering about? Well, it's about a hurling match. It's the beginning of the Munster Hurling Championship, and Cork are winning it at the moment. Lads, if you're listening, it's 2.10 to 12 points. Free to Cork. So from... The 20-meter line, Ben O'Connor has a very, very tough angle confronting him, but he meets the challenge well, head on, another point for Ben O'Connor, that's a fifth. Everything has gone well for Cork so far today, it hasn't gone well for Tipperary, but there's still plenty of time left. We're only in the 17th minute of the second half, but they need to start turning on the style pretty soon, the Munster champions. This is held here by Tom Kenny, confronted immediately there by Seamus Hennessy, the substitute. Trying to hold back the challenge of Cork time and again, but it's not been easy. Almost an irresistible force confronting the men in the blue and gold this afternoon. Great cut again by Sean O'Gohalpine, this time beyond his brother, who's now racing after the tip down. Out comes Brendan Cummins. Now, well aware of the presence of Asaki after him, couldn't hook him. Out as far as Porik Maher. Will be much happier out there, was the ball handled three times. Anyway, got away with it. Eventually, out to Maher once more. And the pressure Jared Carter putting them under is unbelievable. They're, you know, it's a long, long time, I think, since we've seen this hunger in a car team. Um, you know, they've had their troubles with managers over the last few years, but this is the first winter where everything in the last few years where, you know, they've had a full uninterrupted uh, uh, preparation and, you know, Dennis Walsh, a very, very well-respected guy down in Cork and he has the team absolutely flying, their attitude is brilliant. Great cut once again, came off the stick there of Michael Cahill, he's helped out here on this occasion by Paddy Stapleton. Look at the sheer commitment of the Cork players surrounding the man on the ball, refusing to yield an inch in there. It's impossible for Tipperary to get any kind of breathing space, not to mention room to get the ball and get the ball away cleared. That's Jerry O'Connor in there, didn't play very much in the league, maybe they were saving him. In went Niall McCarthy, down he's gone with a bit of an injury as the ball comes out, flipped away by Cahill Nocton, Asakio Halpin's onto it, down he went. 
This time it's uh, Paul Curran who's in trying to take it. Helped out here as that ball is cleared brilliantly by Michael Cahill out into the middle of the park. Trying to get the ball down to the forwards, trying to get the forward line moving. What's gone wrong with Tipperary this afternoon is the sheer intensity and the work rate of Cork, which is absolutely admirable. Up it comes again towards Ben O'Connor. Racing after him is Shane McGrath. Can't catch him. Released outside as far as Cahill knocked him. Bit of a block on it. Two Tipperary men are there. Paddy Stapleton leaving it there for Shane McGrath. 15 minutes and counting still to go as Declan Fanning drives it away down the field. One man down there to wait for it was Owen Kelly. He swings the fullback around this time, Owen Cadigan. And Cadigan is pumped up like the rest of his colleagues. They want to lower Tipperary's colours this afternoon. They've been beaten the last couple of matches. The defeat two years ago, that defeat against Tipperary really hurt Cork. They lost last year, but they were in some disarray in the build-up to that championship anyway. Niall McCarthy still trying to recover from an injury. And I wonder whether the physio Declan O'Sullivan will indicate whether he's able to, to finish for the last 15 minutes. This is what happened to him. Loose stick coming across there, making the connection. I think it was Declan Fanning. I think it'll take more than that to put Niall McCarthy out of the game. He's a tough, warrior. Tough customer, yeah. John Gardner's going to take the free from just uh, 45 metres out from his own goal. Up towards Osaki again, like a magnet. It reaches him most times. Paul Curran has quite a handful. It was a push. Free out. In fairness to Paul Curran, you know, he's, he's done better since he was in there. He's a tough sort of a man marker and he's, he's quite in Osaki a bit. But I think Cork certainly pulled the wool over his in the league final. There was none of this commitment and drive and determination. They wanted to keep you know, a bit of hurling up their sleeve for this match today. And they're, they're dominating at the moment. Yet, you know, a goal for Tippett bring them right back into it. But I think they need a goal at this stage. Well, it's a case of the young pretenders from Tipperary. The champions, much, much younger than the uh, men from Cork. We've seen it all over the years. That's a great ball up towards Osaki. Breaks back out towards Pat Horgan. Haven't seen much of him in the second half, but there is two goals free in the first. And this one, he shortens the grip on the stick and he puts it over the bar. So he's got two goals and a point now. Great work by the 22 year old from Glen Rovers. And it's 2 12 to 12 points. Still the margin, two goals. Horgan takes off one of the brightest young forwards in the country. And uh, Tipperary are about to make a change, and Garroyd Ryan is going to come in for Connor O'Mahony. So, number 28, making his way in, played quite a bit of the league. Yeah, he broke a hand, he's gone he into did, the middle yeah. of the field, and again, Brendan Maher gone to wing-back, Parik Maher to centre-back, so Tipperary making a lot of changes, you know, uh, all over the place, trying to get going, but at the moment, Cork just dominating. They're in a very, very sticky situation, the Munster champions from 2009. No question about that. Can they get themselves out of the hole in which they find themselves right now? Jerry O'Connor up towards Osaki. It's one against one. It's Osaki and it's wide. What a chance. Could nearly have wrapped up the match there. But I think next week Dennis Walsh will be doing a bit of ground hurling with him. I think he had a couple of chances. He just caught that with the heel and hurled him and out wide. It was nearly easier to score it. Very, very unlucky. Great shot. Just rolled out wide. Well, the Cork tactics, as you've been mentioning, are, are quite amazing. I mean, he's on his own up there. The number 15, number 13 play withdrawn roles. He either gets it in the one-to-one -one isolation or he plays in one of the other corner players or the wing forwards coming through. Here's Seamus Callanan from the wing. That's caught well by Cadigan. He's what a model of consistency. He's having a huge game, Jerry. Huge game. Game. Up towards Pat Horgan. Got first run on Paddy Stapleton, who was brilliant against him in the league. That time Brendan Maher couldn't cut it out, and it's uh, Ben O'Connor, a very stylish, artistic kind of hurler. Two men on him, but he still has all the time in the world, it seems, to get it to Gardner. Trying to link up again there with uh, Saki O'Halpin. Paul Curran trying to stick to his task. It breaks out to Kieran Murphy, feeds it again to another player, that's to Pat Horgan. Looks up, has a go, but it's... Yes, it's gone over. It took a while to come down. And it's a goal of two goals and two points now from Pat Horgan. Yeah, but that whole passage of play, you know, started by Ben O'Connor, look back outside, all day they're calm on the ball, they're taking the right options, and there's Kieran Murphy, and that's what he does. Well. Great bit of skill by Pat Horgan. 
he ends up finishing the move maybe 30 seconds later but all around they're throwing the ball around it's a complete team performance that you don't see that often in hurling anymore they're, they're not concerned about individual performances they're concerned about the team and doing the right thing and giving do, the ball to do you remember the, the goal, do you remember the goal he got in the league here against Tipperary three touches goal, yeah. boom 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 it over brilliant the top, yeah. But they're playing for the team. They're not worried about who individual scores. And that comes from the management, giving them the confidence. Don't worry if you're not scoring yourself. Throw the ball around. Give it to the man in the best position. And they're winning all the Tipperary puckouts now as well. They're dominating again. Tip have got to put in a big, big finish. Owen Kelly gets away from Tom Kenny. And he has missed it. And missed it by a fair old distance. It's not the Owen Kelly we have seen in recent seasons. And Liam Sheedy must be very concerned. They're having a horrible day so far at Porky Cueve. It's not working out for them. They came in as hot favourites, but they were up against Cork, a team they always feared. By comparison, Cork, I think, never feared this particular team. Tip team. They always thought they could do it. And Jerry O'Connor is doing it. And this time, Asaki can take his time. And this time, Asaki can wrap it up into the back of the net. Asaki O'Halpine gets Cork's third goal on the hour. Is there any way back now for Tipperary? Can Cork be denied with 10 minutes to go after Jerry O'Connor knocked it in invitingly to Asaki O'Halpi? He may have missed a chance earlier. He wasn't going to miss the second one. And it's Cork who lead this match by 10 points. Yeah, Jaron, you know, he deserves that goal. He could, he could have three goals scored this stage. He's created another couple, won a penalty, and he's just... He's the danger man. Even when the ball goes in now, you know, there's panic stations straight away. Every ball is breaking off him. And, uh, you know, you have to say it's what Cork deserve. There's no player on the Cork team not having a great game here. Every single one of them, from 1 to 15, outstanding. And Tipperary are just shell-shocked. They, they, they don't know what to do out there. Why have, Cork, why have Tipperary been so poor? Well, it's pure determination from Cork. They've just worn them down. They came with a game plan. It worked at perfection. And, you know, you can't answer why Tipperary are bad, but Cork are just brilliant. All they can worry about is their own performance. Here's another chance, and it's on Kelly. Great stop. Somehow, Donoro Cusack produces a miracle stop. At that very moment when you thought you were celebrating at the other end, your team had more or less won the game with a third goal. Donoro Cusack had to get down, show magnificent athleticism, and keep out that shot from Owen Kelly, who scored here two years ago. It's a 65. Yeah, brilliant catch, and what a save. The hardest ball in hurling to save, a ground ball like that, a bouncing ball, and Don Logue down to it. And Niall McCarthy's gone off, he's had a great game. And Michael Cusson now, another different option coming in, six foot seven at wing forward. So the big man is in. Six foot seven inches, as you say, from Glanmire. They breathe him very, very big in Glanmire. Milkman is eight foot six, the postman is nine foot two, you know. It's in the air down there. I Owen know, Kelly. I don't know anything about that, but Michael Cusson is as big a man as I've ever seen. Her. <laughs> That's over the bar. Just about raises a cheer from the 65. It's a his seventh score in the game all of them come all of them have come from place balls and coming in for uh, Tipperary now Timmy Hammersley and he's coming in in place of Noel McGrath last year's young hurler of the year is taken off didn't score today one of those days he'll have much better days ahead but this is an enormous body blow for Tipperary and their development they are heading towards the qualifiers I know there's time left eight minutes to go can they do something about it there's still time, still an opportunity as Cusson wins the first ball that comes down to him from the puck out, now into the other giant and Asaki lets it run on this time, well he didn't take it and Brendan Cummins makes the save, the clearance it, out as far as Brendan Maher it, it was too much ask I suppose that he'd grab it and bury it, <laughs> the two big men straight away but uh, you know another huge option and you'll see the puck outs going down to him now all day in the National League, when uh, Dennis Walsh uh, tried the two of them as a pair on the team together it didn't quite work out, they didn't quite gel yeah, but Cork have always, you know, maybe over the years deceived us from time to time and maybe this is another masterstroke by Cork, you know, they, they had a great league but in the final they looked a bit flat and obviously they were training hard for the championship and kept this performance up their sleeve and none of us saw it coming to be fair, you know, we, you know most of us went for Tipperary to win this game, I didn't see anyone going for Cork and massive performance by them. Inside again and this time there are three backs minding Asaki and that is really taking away the manpower elsewhere as Paddy Stapleton was shouldered, got it out to Declan Fanning. 22 points to 13 in points. Out comes Cadigan again. What a match he's played. The Stars may be up at the other end, but Cadigan's been an absolute hero. Heroic display at the back. Shane O'Neill. Outside here to Cahill Nocton. Now he's got time. 
racing away here. Shane McGrath chasing after him, and he's no slouch. Like two greyhounds on the track. And in the end, McGrath caught up with him and put Cahill knocked it off somewhat. But there are now only six minutes and counting remaining. Tipperary, four points in the second half, three of those from Freeze and one from a 65. That is an amazing statistic. Yeah, Michael Cousin there, yellow card for that late tackle on Paddy Stapleton. That's, I think that's the first wrong option. Cork Clare nearly has taken in the game there, Carl Nocton. Pat Horgan was completely free on the other side of the field and just maybe for the first time today, didn't look up. So, hopefully Paddy Stapleton will be able to continue. But they've only got just over five minutes to play now at this stage. Yeah, you'll need a miracle now by Tipperary, but, you know, a quick goal might leave them with a, with a little bit of hope, but really Cork are dominant all over the field now. Three goals, the margin. That's caught again here by Ronan Curran. Out here to Michael Cusson. Nobody at all near him. It's a huge one. It's gone to the right. that time nobody went into Mark Michael Cusson and just gave him so much latitude as we uh, see another substitute here for Cork and uh, coming on is Paddy O'Sullivan and uh, getting a big cheer going off will be Pat Horgan score of two goals and two points what a star today also on for Tipperary there there number 17 was Jody Brennan and John O'Brien got over two points in the first half but the Tipperary forwards in general, you know, they're completely out hurt in the second half. Every one of the Cork defenders have been brilliant, and uh, you know, it's not often you see you know players like Noel McGrath, Seamus Callan, you know, not getting the puck of the ball in the second half. And Tom Kenny somehow has managed to go all the way through this game in spite of that tight hamstring. Owen Cadigan, great catch over there. Back once again, it comes via Brendan Maher in here as far as Timmy Hammersley and Hammersley has uh, not put it over the bar has he? Umpires finally, finally decide to wave it wide took a fair while to do that and Timmy Hammersley was a star in Fitzgibbon Cup with WIT very, very annoyed he felt it was a point and the umpires now going or the referee going in to talk to his umpires and Barry Kelly may have had a very, very good view of it I think as long as we have GA, we're going, we're going to have umpire decisions like this. It's unbelievable. They should have given the... I think he's given the it's point now. It's a point now. Yeah. It's been given to Timmy Hammersley. But I think what frustrates people is why they don't give the signal straight away. You know, he yeah. would have to get the ball and didn't bother telling us whether it was a point or a white. Here it is now. But Timmy Hammersley should have flicked it inside anyway because they're... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's clearly a point. Absolutely. Donal Cusack fucking it out. In the 67th minute now at Porky Cueve. Again, it's Michael Cahill here trying to make some headway, running into a group of Cork players, among them Tom Kenny with a neat pick up. Little release outside to Jerry O'Connor, trying to snake his way in past a number of Tipperary players. Powerless to prevent his progress. Kieran Murphy hasn't scored so far, but he's contributed handsomely. Cross towards Paddy O'Sullivan, trying to break it down to the substitute here was Ben O'Connor. Coming out and trying to get away from the challenges. Paddy Stapleton. Hasn't been easy being a Tipperary full backline man this afternoon under incessant pressure. It hasn't, Jaron. Do you know what I liked about it? It's it does tackling the way you know you're brought up to tackle it. Attacking the ball, keeping keeping the hurl in, putting the pressure on. None of this sort of heavy you know tackling that we've seen maybe developing hurling a lot of late tackles that type of thing this is a very very disciplined performance by the Cork forwards great tackling throughout referee has just told the sideline official Michael O'Connor for Limerick how many minutes to be played on and that's gone out all for Tipperary player it's got to be a line ball and 27 coming on for Tipperary that's Conor O'Brien and it is his birthday this afternoon so Wish him the very best. He's 25 today. He comes on, gets his opportunity at the expense of Shane McGrath. It's been one of those awful days for Tipperary at Porky Cueve. They knew they were going to get nothing terribly lightly, but they didn't really play. Didn't play as they can. Tip, we're not allowed to play. Cork have been excellent. Brendan Maher now. 
flattened there by Michael Cossum. Free when they finally get back into business again. Tom Kenny having words with Brendan Maher and uh, the referee saying, calm it down. Free to tip. The gap, however, is an alarming one. Some eight points between them. Lobbed in by Brendan Maher. See what they can do with this. Oh, and Kelly maybe look at the number of four players around her. Try to slip it to a colleague. Slip it to Sean O'Halpine instead. And Sean O'Halpine has had a marvellous match. A left half back. Not for the first time. That's broken down by Cosson to the waiting Cahill Nocton. We're into the last minute of the 70. Cosson's after it again. This time shrugged aside by Garroyd Ryan. Big one in, and rising up majestically was Owen Cadigan, almost flattened. It's going to be a free out. Not going to speak quickly. Three additional minutes are going to be played. And now it's just a matter of waiting the time, because surely there is no way back for Tipperary. Yeah, and Owen Cadigan, you know, we had Dermot with Sullivan for years, commanding the square for Cork, but... Owen Cadigan, a uh, footballer as well, obviously, and you know, this is his first full year uh, really concentrating on hurling. I know he did last year as well, but they were out of the championship pretty early, but he's had a brilliant game, and you know, right throughout the field, it's been a brilliant team performance by Cork, one of their best performances over the last maybe five years uh, since they're winning All-Ireland, and they're going to be delighted now going through into the Munster semi-final. Of course, they're now going to be into the semi-final against Limerick, and uh, whatever about the difficulties Limerick have been having this season, Cork are going to have to lift their game again. It's not just about taking on Tipperary at Porky Cueve and Tip will have a big, big task themselves in the qualifiers. It's not over just yet. Donal Cusack, who made one absolutely magnificent save during the second half, just after Osaki's third goal, the save from Owen Kelly, kept the margin wide, out as far as Ben O'Connor. Osaki falls on the ground. Back there is Declan Fanning. Nearly one minute of additional time already played. Tipperary just going through the motions at this stage. Porik Maher. Questions will be asked where to play him, I'm sure. And what again Ronan Curran has had as yeah. well, Jar. Absolutely brilliant under the high ball, particularly in the second half. It's completely dominated. Well, they've had star performers all over the park. Cahill Nocton sends it in and sends it over. It's his second point. One in each half. And now it's 314 to 14 points. And Cork make another change and they bring on number 22, Lorcan McLaughlin. Yeah, Jaron, you know, is it the first time ever we've seen Cahill Nocton properly utilised in a Cork jersey from the start? You know, in the middle of the field, where a lot of people, I certainly think he should be all along with the pace he has and his link play between the half-back and half-forward line and his ability to get scores like that as well. And Jerry O'Connor has given Cork fans some wonderful moments over the years. He's been real twinkle-toes with his twin brother Ben in midfield. Cusson up towards Paddy O'Sullivan. Paddy O'Sullivan would love to get on the scoreboard as well. Now, how's he done here? He's done really, really well. Another for Cork. One of those golden days for the Rebels. And they lead by 3.15 to 14 points. Beaten in the past couple of years by Tipperary. Home and away. But there was no doubting the excellence of their performance here and the quality of their victory. They're ahead by 10 points into the final minute. And Tipperary have some reorganising to do after this. Lark Horber feeding it across here. One last opportunity, maybe. And it's, oh, it's gone out for a 65. Goalkeeper again makes the stop. Should have been in the back of the net, Timmy Hammersley. I don't know, did he save it? Eh? We'll see here now, but... I just thought it was Brian Murphy, the cornerback, yeah, got the yeah. touch, yeah. Good lockdown. So this will probably be the final piece of action. And uh, referee still having words with one of his umpires down there. Bit of encouragement on that. And ball's gone in, and the referee is going to call yeah, across. Yeah, pulled early there. Yeah. I think it was Seamus Hennessy, was it? It's... Uh, Timmy Hammersley and uh, Seamus Hennessy, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he pulled a fraction early under the high ball. So there's a, a late yellow card issued to Seamus Hennessy. 
and that should be more or less that a 10 point victory for Cork against Tipperary their great old rivals in Munster down the years referee checks on his watch blows his whistle it's all over at Porky Cueve and the Munster champions of 2009 and 8 have been beaten and beaten decisively Paulie O'Sullivan came on, but uh, from goalkeeper Donald O'Cusack, right through the substitutes, each and every one of them, and including in particular Asakio Alvin, who got a goal and a point, his goal after 60 minutes was the one that eventually put the seal on Cork's victory, and Michael, all the way through, I know you were hugely impressed. Yeah, you know, Ger, it's very easy to write off a team, they've huge experience, they've been brilliant all Ireland champions, you know, but you had to go back a few years for a performance like that, they've had a lot of trouble off the field, you know, they've shown great resolve, they've stood up for what they believed was right you know, for them as a team and the pressure was on them today to deliver and Dennis Walsh came in as a manager, this is his first season with them all year and I have to say that's a brilliant team performance, their teamwork, their discipline, their determination, everything was outstanding and you know, Tipperary did probably roll over, it's a day things didn't go well for them, everything went right for Cork, they got all the breaks but you'd have to say a very, very professional performance and you know, they're going to be a big threat after that and, and everyone's going to sit up and take notice of them again. Well, the question is whether they'll be able to maintain this standard all the way through the summer. They were two points up at half-time. They scored a goal and ten in the second half, and Tipperary's reply during the second period was only five points. It wasn't much to build upon the nine they got in the opening half when they were a bit more competitive, but Cork simply blew them asunder in the second half with an overwhelming performance, a 15-man effort, and Dennis Walsh, the manager who came in here to take charge of a team and of a county board and the county itself that was looking and longing for success. And he's the man who's come in and he's done it with Pa Finn, an experienced head, with Pat Buckley, a former colleague, a former midfield star from Milford, Jerry Ryan as well, who's a great hurling man. They came in, they brought in some extra backroom people with them to put together the bones of a brilliant team to build upon for the future. And Kieran Fraggy Murphy there, the team captain, will be one of those celebrating tonight. Yeah, and Jerry, I suppose you'd say, you know, Tipperary this year, they won the last two Munster Championships, they've won a the National League under this management. So, you know, winning a Munster is not high in their agenda, but still they wouldn't set out, you know, to be beaten by 10 points today. But, they're, you know, they go in the back door, they're definitely going to improve. You don't become a bad team overnight. They had an outstanding year last year, we're a puck of the ball away from winning the Ireland. So, you know, if they regroup, get everything right, get a couple of matches under their belt, they could well be back into the wreck. They have to be, because, you know, before the match today, they've been rated very, very close to being the top team in the country. So, you know, they're not going to go away overnight, but they'll be very, very disappointed. But still, they're stung now, you know, and they have to go back to the drawing board. And later on in the summer, I think they're still going to be there. No cups handed out today, but a major victory for Cork. Full-time score at Porky Cueve in the first round of the Munster Championship. It's Cork 3.15. It's Tipperary 14 points. Des. All right, thanks a million, Jer and Michael. That was something, wasn't it? Just to give you the other results of the day, Offaly and Antrim in the Leinster Hurling Championship. It went to extra time before... Offaly pulled away then to win by 2.26 to 3.16. Uh, Antrim led by a point with a minute to go in that match, but Offaly win. They go through to play Galway in the Leinster semi-final. In the Ulster Football Championship, Down beat Donegal by two points after extra time. It finished down 1.15. Donegal, two goals and ten points. And in Connacht, an easy enough win for Roscommon at Ryslip. They beat London by 14 points to six. Roscommon now play Leitrim. And of course, we'll have highlights of all of those games tonight and the Sunday game at half past nine. But what about that one? Well, Cyril, I suppose nothing gives a championship a buzz like a court team on the, on the row. Yeah, well, I think it's 40,000. That was the real kick-off of, uh, today. Like, we needed this championship game. Now, most people felt to be tight and most people win for a tip. I included that to win the match. No one envisaged that, t that Cork could win by 10 points. But I think it's a, it's a success for not alone. The, it's the Cork team, Cork panel, panel and the management. Dennis Welch got it very right. Half back line back in again. Cadigan injured Morris all the year in full back. Brilliant. Two cornerbacks. They are great guys. O'Neill Murphy. Uh, you know, the, the conductor Dorcas and Donald Cusick. They were completely on top. And then up front, he stuck with Osaki, where most people said after the league final that Osaki mm -hmm. wasn't on song. But like, to me, in the league final, he was just that little bit off. And still, you'll find that he'd improve. And all over the pitch, it was the work rate of the Cork forwards and the backs, the pressure to put on, the movement, the scores. Like, Ben O'Connor was like reinvented again. Like, they looked, even there, Des, you were miraculous. If after the game, you could see how much it meant. A lot of them players have won All Ireland's. Yeah. To me, I just feel that today they felt this is bigger than All Ireland because it, all this other thing has been put to rest. And they're back on song again. Now, Tip will be very disappointed to go down by 10 points because they fell away completely in the end. Forwards 
are all disarray. But they won't go away that quick because they'll come back into the qualifiers. They'll be still very, very dangerous now. They'll be very, very hurt. They'll have a lot to think about. But Cork tonight will be very happy. And they have the few players to come back in. Uh, like Tomas here is always on about Jungo Sullivan. Come on and tapped over a great yeah. point. Like, these guys are still very good hurlers. They're going to be a force <coughs> and they'll, they'll go from strength to strength. But isn't it interesting, Jerry? Once again, we can forget about league final form based on this weekend. You know, everyone's raving about Galway and Cork. They're, they haven't got the legs anymore. Well, it's really changing, isn't it, yeah. as the year goes on. But I think the, the message from today is let no one ever again uh, question the quality, the character, the intelligence, mm -hmm. not to talk of the ability of this great Cork team. They've been a superb team for the last 10 years. Whenever questions were really answered of them, they, they, re they came out and they answered them. This was the best display I've, 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 I've seen them give since they played Galway two, three seasons ago below in Turles. Now, I was standing on the sideline that day and I saw the character of them, the fire they have in them, the determination, the belief they have, the unity they have of that, of that group of Cork players. On and off the field, they are, are absolutely mighty men. No, they demolished the parade today. I, I don't want to say they humiliated them, yeah. but I mean, Tip didn't score from playing the second half. That's unbelievable for this Tipperary team who scored, who scored yeah, yeah. 23 yeah. points in the All-Ireland last year five against pints, Kilkenny. Five points you know, in Five points half. altogether. Yeah. This so was a demolition job. That, that's, that's a glowing tribute to Cork Tomas, but it's still only uh, the end of May and September. There's still a long way, isn't there? Yeah, but I think the crucial thing, and you mentioned the league final days, right? Even though Cork were beaten in the league final, right? Their focus was always going to be on Tipperary in the championship. It was a big bonus to get to the league, cha to the mm. league final. To introduce... 30 or 40 players that he did use throughout the ch challenge matches and the league performance. And I take it back to Tipperary. I mean, they didn't take the league seriously this year mm -hmm. by all accounts, right? That they were gearing for this championship, yeah. they had the All Iron Series. And it showed yeah. today a big the time at the Hurling. The wasn't just up yeah. It showed big time. You, can, you, can, you cannot beat competitive matches, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you just cannot turn, on, okay. turn up on a day and expect to turn on the tap and automatically come. All right, we're going slowing. to chat about that and we're going to chat about where Tipperary are and their progress.